Welcome to Prime Sports Network and our starting lineup report for Pocono. That's right. It is the, what are they calling this thing? The Great American Getaway 400. I guess otherwise known as the Pocono 400. Greg DePommy here, as uh, promised. We are on Prime Sports Network this week. We're going to see how this rolls. Don't forget, we'll have a link in the description from our show earlier this week where CJ Radun from Rotowire and I went in depth on all the key drivers to keep an eye on this week. Of course, the odds were earlier this week, uh, but uh, that's what I'm here for to take a look at qualifying and practice speeds today and also guess what the odds might be. I did a real bad job of guessing the odds last week, which is why I don't like guessing. But uh, don't forget uh, to check out the message boards because I had an opportunity to communicate with uh, several of our viewers and voice my uh, opinion on the craziness of having Shane Van Gisbergen, no matter how good of a driver he is on a street course, uh, no matter how good he looked on Saturday, just the craziness of having him as an even money favorite, especially on a slick track. And it all worked out in our favor. Uh, we liked the long shots last week. Uh, Reddick was our top choice. Uh, so it worked out perfectly, you know, with Reddick almost winning and Bowman being one of those long shots. So hope you paid off. Uh, we're here to try to see if you can pay off again. So let's get right to it. Let's take a look at who is Big surprise right you see him there on the bottom left of the screen ty gibbs is on the pole and ty gibbs uh just happened to be one of my top three plays for the week as well actually out of the top contenders and favorites he was on my top four and then um my other long shots one of the three uh i think has a shot so we're going to get in him in just a little bit but i feel real good about where my top four sit right now including of course ty gibbs who's on the pole so uh, i think the last time he was on the pole was the coke 600 so you know for what that's worth uh the fact though is is uh, you take a look at what gibbs uh, has just done over the second half not very good but the reason why uh, we thought that he was a pretty good play going into this weekend was because of the fact that he has raced well here before xfinity and cup uh, he has three top fives between the two, two runner-ups, both in the Xfinity, fifth last year here in Cup, and most importantly, he seemed to get off the schneid with the third place finish last week, which is his first top five since Darlington. Throw in the fact that he's driving a Toyota, we know how important that is, and so far, so good for Ty Gibbs and Toyota, because they are clearly, at this time, Coming into this race and coming into the race now on Sunday after what happened today, they are the manufacturer to beat. They had three of the top four fastest on the pole, excuse me, including the pole, and four of the top six fastest in practice, including the fastest in practice, which we'll get into in just a sec. Uh, Ford and Chevy really were just well behind. Uh, neither one of them a clear number two. Uh, Ford and Chevy were, both had three of the top 10 drivers in qualifying. Uh, Ford had two of the top seven in practice. Chevy just one of the top seven, but it flipped if you take a look at the top 12. Ford still only had two. Two of the top 12. Chevy, though, had six of the top 12. Uh, so that's pretty much, you know, and that doesn't really happen. It pretty much stayed the way it has historically recently. Toyota, definitely the fastest. Chevy second by a little bit, and Ford third. So, uh, and by the way, the only two, uh, four, well, actually, really the two Fords that you want to keep an eye on are, you know, two of the top Fords, uh, the Penske uh, uh, drivers, Blaney and Logano, uh, even though uh, there were some other Fords that actually did pretty well. Zane Smith did well uh, in qualifying. Uh, Josh Berry did well in qualifying. Actually, not Zane Smith. Josh Berry was the one I was pointing to. Did well in qualifying. And uh, Mike, uh, Michael McDowell did good in practice. Okay, so uh, let's go down the road now because, as you can see there, Gibbs is the top driver sitting there. Uh, is the fastest driver, I should say. And his odds are 14 to 1. So considering uh, he was also sixth fastest in practice and he's driving a Toyota, um, his odds are going to come down considerably. 
I don't know how much they come down. My guess is, because he's never won a cup race before, my guess is going to be somewhere around 5 to 8 to 1. So I don't, I have no idea uh, where it's going to go, but he does not have the name power uh, as Van Gisbergen does. And I know it's kind of funny to say, but Van Gisbergen had that allegiance, especially over in Australia. So who knows how many Australians put big money on Van Gisbergen uh, over the weekend uh, prior to the race. But I don't see Gibbs getting that kind of support. So maybe you get a little bit better of a break. Uh, as long as he's not too low, he might still be a pretty decent choice. But I wouldn't go too crazy on him if he's a little low just because of the fact he's never won before. And uh, this is a race as we go into the history as far as starting positions. Remember, we talked about this. This is a race that uh, you don't have to be in the top six rows. Okay? Actually, if you, not, excuse me, top three rows, top six spots. If you look at it, seven of the nine most recent winners started outside the top three rows. So that's outside the top six. Let's just scroll down here and see how the rest of the board looked. So you've got Gibbs, Byron, Truex. Uh, oh, oh and, and Byron looks really fast right now. Okay, Byron is one of the top two combined qualifying and practice. Byron's second fastest in both practice and qualifying. Truex third in both practice and qualifying. That is something to keep an eye on. Truex, because we haven't seen him this fast on a Saturday prepping for a race in a while, in a long while. All right, and there's the rest of the six. Howland, Berry, and Bowman. And uh, here you have Toyota, Ford, Chevy. But here's the problem. And this is why I, I'm going to feel pretty good about just going, you know, I know Hamlin's the, the man. He's the man. Okay. He, he should be the favorite coming in. And I think he still will be because he's starting fourth. He should be the favorite tomorrow. Okay. He's just a, a monster here. Okay. But the 24th in practice, it's a little bit concerning for me. Um, so considering he's going to be really low in odds and the practice speed wasn't all that great, neither was the practice speed for Barry or Bowman. So if we want to use that trend, look, the trend's not 100% anyway, but let's just say we use that trend to, uh, to try to knock out some drivers. I think I might knock out four, five, and six because one, two, and three, I think the odds may not be too bad if you look at it. Uh, now, Truex, of course, might be different. Uh, he's still getting the recognition. I don't know whether he should or not at this point this season. He's just in a bad rut. 22.3 average in his last eight races. You heard me. Not the last three, not the last five, the last eight. That's just bad. Okay? So as well as he's done here, and he's been good, he has not been awesome. Okay? He's just been good. He's led 257 combined laps. Keep in mind, 2.5-mile racetrack in 34 races. That's just uh, okay. It's okay. And with the next gen, third and seventh. That's okay. But he was already 7-1. Okay, I, I, I don't know much further he drops, to tell you the truth, though. If he drops more than 7-1, to one, forget it. I mean, no way. Not in that rut. If I get him at 7-1, to one, Toyota and all that, i got to consider it. It all depends what else did I do earlier in the week and how do I want to hedge my bets and things of that nature. I might consider it because of the fact that my other drivers that I put money on on Tuesday, as you know from doing the show... Like I said, they're, they're looking good, so I, I'm fine there. So maybe I could hedge a little bit, but I my overall point is I'd rather just go with the first three and just get rid of the next three if I'm going to go down that road of, well, where do I go with that trend of the top six? Well, if I break it in half, I'll stick with Gibbs. Oh, obviously, I already picked them, but Byron and Truex are the two that I'm going to look at. And by the way, Byron was 8-1 to one too. So Truex 7-1, Byron 8-1 to one on Tuesday. And they're both looking really good. The problem with Byron is that even though his best race on this track was last year, when he was on the pole and led 60 laps, he still finished 14th. And in his last 10 races, his average is 16.5. It's better than Truex, but, I mean, not by much. So, again, I, I'm, I'm just going to... Look, I, I'm sticking with my strategy. If I had to take one driver in the top six, though... That I didn't already have, I I would probably go with Truex because he's driving the Toyota. 
that that's probably which I, I but you know what chances are I'm not gonna even budge on any of these other options because I feel pretty good but for the audience out there that's looking for hey I didn't bet it in a week what do I do now what do you think the odds are gonna be um, I probably still favor Truex but I think Gibbs will get better odds than Truex I, I think he should and if based on because again you're talking 14 to one versus seven to one so in that respect I like Gibbs so I still like Gibbs um, and Hamlin, I just think that this is a week to try and and as much as he's been dominant here, I just can't look at Hamlin this week only because of the fact that he has also been kind of in a bad rut. Last five average, 25.6. This is a theme we talked about the other day. So, but look, we all know who's been the best driver here. It's not even close. It's Hamlin in a landslide. If he wasn't DQ'd a couple of years ago, he would have swept the two next-gen races here. He's got three wins in the last nine here. But remember what we said on the other show, which is very important. The difference between his hot start when he first uh, raced here early in his career, his very first races, he had a hot start to Pocono versus his hot start in the last nine, the first nine versus the last nine of his career, very similar, seven top tens. But there's a big difference between the two. What is that difference? We'll check out the video and you'll find out. Okay. And again, it's in the this link in the description area. And that's on mystery caution. Let's move along here because we we gotta we gotta we gotta roll here. So there we go. Now we're starting to cook in Reddick and Blaney, seven and eight. Again, Reddick and Blaney were two of my uh, top plays. Uh, I liked uh, the fact, especially Reddick. I know he's been snake bitten the last couple of weeks. I know you could say he choked. I don't feel good about that. But second of both races last year, with the, in the last two years with the next gen, uh, has uh, three runner ups in four races. Uh, actually, not four, in eight races at Pocono combined Cup and NASCAR. And he's also. Unlike the other drivers I was talking about, he is on a hot streak. So I like that. He's driving a Toyota. He was fast as pra- in, in practice. Uh, by the way, his odds were seven to one. I, I I don't know if he's if his odds are going to drop. My guess is they will, but you know maybe not enough to discourage me if I haven't already taken him. So once again, uh, if I'm just betting today, I still like Gibbs and I still like Reddick, even though the odds. Uh, for Gibbs will come down a bit. It all, and, and once again, it all depends on how far they drop. Okay, Blaney. Now, we like Blaney because of the fact that he was 15-1. to 1, All right? And he's also uh, hot right now in the Cup Series. Even though his results are bad in the next gen, keep in mind he had issues uh, when he started 6th in the race in 2022 next gen. Uh, but historically, he's been good at Pocono. So... Hot, good at Pocono, and 15 to 1. And you know what? I'm not so sure those odds are going to drop very much. Maybe they drop to 12 to 1, something like that. So Blaney is still a pretty good bargain at this point, especially since he's driving a Ford. I mean, they're not going to give him any breaks. Uh, here's Elliott, Larson, and Bell. What about that? 11, 12th, and 13th for, th- for these three big contenders. Well, Larson, you know, it, it, it's kind of hard for me to... Uh, try to temper everybody's enthusiasm about Larson each week. I don't think I have to do that this week because, you know what? I bet you his odds stay the same. I bet you how... Well, I shouldn't say I bet you because uh, these odds could be crazy. I, I saw that last week. But Hamlin should be the favorite. But, you know, I think Larson's going to be right there. If Hamlin's 4-1 to one, like he was the other day, I think Larson could be 4-1 to one, just like he was the other day because Larson's 12th starting position is not all that bad. It's just not as good as normal. And he's eighth fastest in practice, which is okay, but again, not great. Um, and uh, yeah, Larson has uh, never won here, so that's important, right? Especially for a driver potentially four to one. Bell, thirteenth, eh, not that great. Expected something a little bit better, and even slower in practice, sixteenth. Um, he was six to one. I wonder if those odds will change much. They may not. Maybe maybe you get a couple of points. Maybe he's eight to one. I'm not so sure I like him now at six to one now. Something about what I saw today, not 
not all that impressive. So I might be thinking twice at six to one, but seven to one, eight to one. No, I'm not thinking twice. Uh, I, I wouldn't be worried or concerned about that. Again, keeping in mind what we talked about being outside the top three rows uh, has actually been something that uh, has worked here at Pocono as far as starting position. So I, I wouldn't worry too much about that. And then we roll down and we've got Kozlowski at 14, teammate Busher 18, Chastain 19. And yeah, forget Chastain. Uh, we mentioned the other day, uh, this is just not a racetrack for Ross Chastain. He's just awful here. So just forget him. Uh, Busher, on the other hand, uh, we looked at him and said, well, he's won here before. He's getting 25 to 1. But that was a, a, a rain shortened win. And he really hasn't done anything else here. And he looks pretty slow so far. So forget Busher. And as far as Kozlowski, uh, his only win was 2011. So he only has one win. But he's been good here over his career. Um, but he's only led 87 laps in his last 17 races. And his average finish in cup the last five is 18.8 so he's cooled off a little bit he's also been pretty slow with the next gen here so yeah i'm a, I'm a hard pass on kozlowski busher and chastain uh mcdowell is 21st here bush is 24 so yeah kyle very disappointing so you're definitely going to get good odds on kyle he was 22 to 1 and that's been generous the way uh normally the way things have gone lately for him he's 35 to 1 but he's 22 to 1 because he has four wins that have all come in the last 11 races at Pocono. He was second in 2022 before he was disqualified along with Hamlin. He led 63 laps in that race, um, which is obviously strong. Um, the problem is, is that since he switched to Chevy last year, slow 25th, qualifying 21st finish, and now slow out of the gate in qualifying and practice. Yeah, you know what? I'm um, probably, if I haven't already, I've already taken him. But if I haven't, I, I've got to do something. Look, I, I, I've got a hard pass on him. You know, maybe I put just a, a buck or two on him. Uh, that's about it, just in case. But it's looking like the Chevy move has not worked out for Kyle Busch at Pocono. Uh, moving on over, Bubba Wallace. Here's our here's one of our three long shots that's paid off only because of the fact that his practice run was fourth. Here it's 29th. And I'm just going to run through the rest of these drivers because you don't really see any big-name drivers, too. That's also something to keep in mind. But here's the practice speeds. So as we roll, Oh, wait. I went too far. Here, here we go with... Uh, wait, wait, again, too far, right? Yeah, Bubba Wallace right there, fourth. All right, so Bubba uh, is driving a Toyota... Fourth fastest in practice. Uh, the odds shouldn't drop too much. They were 35 to 1 because he's starting, you know, all the way back in 29th. Um, oh, and as far as drivers who have won here in the 20s, seven times out of 90, uh, drivers have won in the 20s, um, including uh, ranging from 22nd to 29th. So Carl Edwards did that, the 29th, farthest back, 2005. Wallace is 20. Ninth, But this is what you want, right? You want a fourth place practice run if you're starting way back like Wallace. But Wallace had two good runs in the next gen. Uh, but big difference, he started those races in the top 10. All right. And it also coincided with the fact that he switched. Unlike Kyle, Wallace, he switched to a Toyota. And that was a big get for Bubba Wallace. Uh, so anyway, we'll see how it works out. Uh, I, 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 I definitely think that he's got some work to do, no doubt, but uh, you're going to get good money on him. You know, you're probably still going to get 35 to 1 or in that range, so why not? Um, I still think he's probably one of the better long shot plays. And McDowell as well, because McDowell is right there in fifth, in fifth practice. Even though he's starting 21st, better position than Wallace. Uh, if you take a look at McDowell and. Uh, uh, let's see, where's uh, McDowell's numbers here uh, at Pocono? Yeah, they're all the way in the back. Um, because he was 131 to start the day. So 130 30 to 1 the other day. I don't expect that number to change very much because he's starting 21st. Um, keep this in mind. He started 25th at Pocono in 2022 and finished 6th. Okay, 
So he does have that. And uh, we also talked about how much better he's been at Pocono uh, over his last half of his career races here in Cup Series compared to his first half. Big, big difference. He's also coming off a fifth last week. So uh, you're going to get 100 to 1 probably on McDowell. Uh, and uh, why not, right? Hey, Bowman was 70 to 1 on this show. Well, actually, 70 to 1 uh, before the week began. He ended up going off, I think, around 25 to 30 to 1 at most sports books on race day. Okay, that was, of course, uh, Bowman. All right, so those are the only long shots that I would be strong about. And I'm, again, I'm disappointed. Because I said on Tuesday, I really thought this could be a race. Maybe it still will. And because you're going to have a lot of different strategies going out there. Okay? Because of the length of the uh, of the track. We haven't seen a 2.5 mile this year. So maybe they're going to sucker me into thinking that the long shots are out of it. Uh, but I don't know. I mean, I, I already put my dollar bets. Remember I said I was going to put a dollar like on seven long shots. Like long, long shots like McDowell. Um, but none of them have really again mcdowell has been the best uh that's it every is this is just top heavy i mean besides zane smith's ninth place finish in qualifying and 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 barry has been doing better so i wouldn't really say that's a major surprise but for the most part you know 80 percent of the drivers in the top 10 who were in the last run there are qualifying they're all like the big boys most of them are and if you just want to stretch it out to the top 13, you can include Elliot Larson and Bell. So most of the top drivers, not the long shots. Like, the big boys seem to come out today. And you would think that maybe that will be the case again. Uh, but look, if, again, if you're looking for a long shot with a Toyota especially, because if you're looking for a long shot, you might as well hit a Toyota. And I think Bubba Wallace is clearly the best one out there. Um, oh, and um, uh, Elliot. I didn't really touch up on Elliot too much. Uh, again, he's starting 11th, and uh, w the reason that we didn't, or at least I didn't like Elliot the other day, same reason why I'm just going to back away from him on this show, I don't think his odds, maybe you'll get a little bit better of a number, he was 9-1 to one the other day, um, uh, but I, th the problem is a couple things, one, he hasn't let a lap here in seven races, number two, because remember, when he won the race in 2022, he finished third, but Bush and Hammond DQ'd, so he got the win. So anyway, but Elliott, like the other drivers, are in a little bit of a downturn. You know, maybe the middle season blues kind of deal. Uh, his last three races finished 21st, 18th, and 18th. So uh, that's why I'm going to stick to my guns. Uh, nothing in qualifying or practice that happened today changed my mind in a major way. Uh, I think the only the only major changes that I had today uh, would have been whether how how conflicted am I possibly with Byron and Truex at second and third in both sessions. That's where I'm going to have to think a little bit uh, about what I'm going to do because I didn't take either one. They both started the week uh, with uh, short odds. Uh, obviously, their odds aren't going to get any better now. Uh, but I, I, I think I'm in one of those situations where I'm just going to go with what I went with. I'm going to stick to my guns. I feel good because I have Gibbs on the pole. I also feel good about my other drivers, Reddick uh, and uh, Blaney. And who was the other guy? Oh, no. Actually, was it Gibbs? No, it was uh, Reddick. Oh, Bell. Christopher Bell. Uh, yeah, Bell... Uh, I guess I would. I, I think I, I'm probably going to get better odds with Bell tomorrow than I would have on Tuesday because he was six to one on Tuesday and did not look overly good today. But then again, uh, they're on this Christopher Bell deal. They're on our our preseason pick to win the the cup. Uh, he is up there as he's tied for the NASCAR Championship futures. I believe he is. Actually, what is he? Four to one, I believe. Four to one. Up there with Larson and, and those boys. Uh, and they're giving him a heck of a lot of respect each week with the odds. So I, I get the feeling that they're not going to shy too far away uh, coming tomorrow, even though he was outside the top ten in both sessions. All right, so that's going to wrap it up. Again, link in the description. Oh, subscribe. Yes, subscribe to the channel. 
Uh, if you enjoy the video, we really appreciate it. Um, and if you're wondering, you shouldn't be wondering. Maybe you are because some people probably haven't even tuned in. Once I said that's it, they probably tuned out anyway. But just keep in mind that the reason we are doing this and made a switch with the channels, our Tuesday show on Mystery Caution, our starting lineup report on Prime Sports Network is because our numbers have been a lot more impressive with this report. And we were not getting enough subscribers on Mystery Caution. And I just cannot take the chance in having uh, a lot of traffic kind of go to waste on a channel that does not get advertising dollars. We get the advertising dollars here. So we appreciate if whether you, even if you've subscribed before, you know, liking the video is also important for us. That helps us out with traffic, as does sharing the video. Share it on social media, all that stuff to your friends. Uh, colleagues, uh, anybody you think hasn't seen these videos before, uh, if you share it with them, uh, hopefully they become new subscribers or just, hey, they just pop in and uh, add to uh, the number here on the show, uh, either for a Tuesday or a Saturday report. Okay, so next week it's the Brickyard. And next, uh, and on Tuesday, when CG and I go over the Brickyard over on Mystery Caution, and we're going to talk about the F1 race, too. So there's a couple more F1 races before they go on their hiatus. Next week's Hungary. I believe it's Hungary. So we're going to be doing uh, both of those uh, series on Tuesday. But when we talk about the Brickyard, at least we'll have Pocono to look back on. as Because it's, I mean, it's obvious. We're just going to go, hey, what's the most similar track to the Brickyard? It's what we saw this past Sunday at Pocono. So this is also going to be very important. Keep your notes regarding what happens there tomorrow. It will definitely, well, we feel it should impact next week's race. If, if anything, maybe it'll definitely uh, should impact the odds. All right. Good luck to everybody tomorrow in Pocono. And we'll see you soon here on Prime Sports Network. And hopefully we'll see you over on Mystery Caution on Tuesday for our preview of the Brickyard. Also, by the way, don't forget to check out the link for CJ's report of this race at rotowire.com. That is also in the description area. Have a great Sunday, great race day, and we'll see you soon.